There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Amen. Give God a good praise for his word. God bless you. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Go and turn and tell the neighbor, you must be born again. If you're going to enter to God's way of doing things, tell him again, you must be born again. Can they shout amen? If you're going to do what God wants you to do, you must be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus, very, very, I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot enter into God's way of doing things. In the shout, amen. I want to talk to you very plain tonight. Now, if you're waiting on some kind of feeling, you're going to miss this message. I want to talk to you very plain. It's going to be plain. It's going to be a powerful message. Very, very, I say unto you, except the man or woman be born, watch this, of, of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter in the God way of doing things. Okay? So, if you're going to do things the way God wants you to do them, you must be born again. Amen. You must be born again. And I, and I like the verse of scripture, the verse of scripture where he says, he says, that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Can you shout amen? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the flesh. We were born from my mother's womb. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. All of us in here, we were born from the flesh. That which is born of flesh is flesh. But watch this now. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. If you born, that, that which is born of spirit is what? Spirit. If your spirit is going to be born again, it has to be the spirit that calls the conception to come on your spirit. That which is born of flesh is what? Flesh. It took a seed to cause you to be him. Amen. The seed to cause all of us that are here tonight, it took a seed to cause us to be here. And there was a seed from flesh. Amen. And, and, and now it's going to take a seed for you to be born again. Seed of the word of God. Remember what the scripture said in the book of Peter. For you were not born again of incorruptible seed. Did you get it? For you were not born of incorruptible seed. Come on, let's flip over that one. Just read it. Okay. Write this in your note. 123. Let's do 22. For you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must be, you must show sincere love for each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. For you have been born again, watch this, not by, but not to live, not, not to a life that will quickly end. I'm reading from a different translation. But your life, but your new life will last forever because it comes from, from the eternal living word of God. Amen. 
You're not born of corruptible seed, but you're born of incorruptible seed. Okay? That's the born again man. Your first birth, your first birth was by corruptible seed. Amen. That's how we came into the world, corruptible seed. But now your, your new birth, you're going to be born by incorruptible seed. It's going to last forever. Uh, amen. When you, when you and I were born again, amen, you were born again to live forever. That's why I don't understand people when they, when you, when you get born again, you know, people tell me, you know, when you get born again, you know, people ask me to my, you know, you still say, that's just like asking me, am I, are you still born? You ain't get that. Some y'all gonna drive home and get it. It's just like walking to a man tonight. You still born? You follow what I'm saying? You still born? What the devil you ask me that question for? You looking at me and ask me if I, am I still born? Amen. That's the same way about a man or woman that's born again. You come ask me 10 years from now tonight. You still saved? <laughs> can I can I in a second I'm back? Yeah, I'm born again. Matter of fact, my spiritual birth is going to last longer than my natural birth. Amen. Amen. You, you doubt your, 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 your natural birth, you, go, you still, you were born, but you got to leave here. Amen. But your spiritual birth, don't you know you're going to live for eternal? Amen. And that's what this verse of scripture is saying. This verse of scripture is talking about, you know, when you were born the second time, you were born from an eternal virtue. You were born to live again forever. When this flesh, when this flesh die, you won't die. Ah, dog, and I preach that. I said, when the flesh die, you won't die. When y'all, if, 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 if some of y'all happen to outlive me, don't be. I know, cry a little bit because you're gonna miss me. <laughs> cry, cry, you're gonna miss me. But, but don't be saying that to my Lord, bring him back. Amen. Man, man, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Man, I'm going to live with Jesus. That's why, amen. One writer said, I'm living this life to live again. That's why I'm living this life right here, because I'm going to live again. Ain't no, in the, uh, don't you know we are alive forevermore? That's the power of the thing. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you know you're looking at a miracle. <laughs> See, you're looking at the flesh. But that which is born of spirit ain't no flesh. My God. I said that which is born of spirit ain't no flesh. And that's why you got a lot of people sitting right here looking at flesh and get so discouraged. Man, they ain't thinking about no flesh. Man, flesh can do what it want to do. Flesh, hallelujah. Flesh can act the fool how much it want them. I got eternal purposes in mind. Flesh ain't never stopped the will of God. Tell okay, man, somebody. Flesh can't never stop what God want to do. So why you allowing people to sit right here and walk in all that flesh, get you all deflated? Man, you, you see flesh, deal with flesh and move on. Amen. Because you know that which is a flesh, I mean, that which is born of flesh, is flesh. You know somebody going to do some fleshly stuff anyhow. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. Turn to your neighbor tell him I've been born again. Mm -hmm. My spirit man has been born again. My flesh is de deteriorating day by day. But my spirit man has been, is born again. Amen. Amen. So we, we, when, when you were born again, when we were born again, it was because you asked Christ to come into your heart. You believed that he was the Messiah. You believe that Jesus died on the cross for you. When you ask him to come into your life, immediately you had eternal life. That's what the scripture teaches. And that's what Jesus was telling Nicodemus. Nicodemus, except you are born again. Nicodemus was a religious person, went to church. And that's what's wrong with a lot of people. They think their good works are going to get them in heaven. He, Jesus had to tell Nicodemus, your good works can't get you into heaven. Because you were teaching the church don't mean that you're going to heaven. Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born again. The spirit of God has to come on your spirit and cause the quickening to come. Hallelujah. I said the spirit of God got to come on your spirit and cause a quickening to come. The word quicken means make alive. Now once the Holy Ghost, somebody said the Holy Ghost. 
Once the Holy Ghost come in your spirit, then now your spirit become alive to God. That's why you got a desire to do what God wants you to do. Even though you got a flesh that's fighting against you, your desire is to please God. Because your spirit man has came alive. Hallelujah. I say you born again. Amen. Because you know man don't want to do God's will. You wasn't always saved. Come on, talk to me here. You know you ain't had no mind like you got now. Huh. Conscious talking to you every time you get ready to do something wrong, conscious. You remember before you got born again, you used to go do wrong and you just hope you just didn't get caught. Because you were going back. Come on, preach to me here. Because you know you were going back and trying to get away with it again. But now, when you do wrong now, your conscience is messing with you. You, 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 you just, I mean, you, you can't even sleep right. That's because you're born again. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, has come on your spirit and has caused your spirit to come alive to the things of God. I don't know about you, but I'm going I'm to take a praise break right here. Thank you for saving me. Not just, uh -uh. Thank you for saving me. I ain't talking about, no, thank you for making me no church member. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for calling me to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't think like I used to think. I don't, my heart is different. I want to please you. Thank you for saving me. I believe when I die, I'm going to heaven. Thank you for a born again man. Hallelujah. I believe what you say is right. Come on, y'all. I said, I believe what he says right. Mm -hmm. I believe with all my heart. I want to talk to some born again folk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, I believe what God says right. And everything different from God is wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it ain't like Jesus said it's supposed to be, it's wrong. I'm going to show you in the scripture too. You got to be, got to have the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Let me make a statement because I'm getting into the part of a message. I'm getting to the part of the message that I, I, I thank God want me to minister to you. Well, listen at me. Without the Spirit of God, you can't please God. Okay? I'm going to get into a little bit more depth than that, Deacon Banks. Without the Spirit of God, we can't please God. Okay? Without the Holy Ghost, you can't please God. You got to depend on the Holy Ghost. Now, now watch me now. Listen at what I'm about to tell you. See, when a baby come into the world, when a baby is born, that baby don't even know that it's in the world. It's in the world and it's real because you're kissing on it. Right? You telling me how much you love it? That baby don't know that. How many of you? I bet I see nobody throw their hand up. How many here remember when you were five weeks old? <laughs> Don't say the devil. <laughs> look at what's coming. Look at bad boy putting his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, not, not, come on. But, but what we born? You were in the world. You didn't even know you was in the world. But you were alive, wasn't you? Your mama, your mama took care of you. Your mama, your mama fed you milk. You hung, you cried. Amen. Amen. You did all that. Amen. I bet your mama knew you were alive, but you didn't know you were alive. Or your daddy knew you were alive, but you didn't know you were alive. Amen. Same way you've been born again. And that's why I want to teach tonight. Because even, let me tell you something. See, you, and, and you know this too. And even, even saints that are born again, if you don't gain knowledge in your Christian walk, you still like you are. You ever seen the people walk around, they 30 years old, and still need somebody to take them to the bathroom? Some saints. I preach good then. Some saints been in church all your life, still need somebody to take them to the toilet. Peeing and boo-booing all over yourself. Got these saints, 12, 13, 14 years old, still got a ball in their mouth. 
Your teeth going to be ugly. You know, baby, children that, children that keep that ball in their mouth too long, they push their teeth out. Okay, yeah. And that's because, that's because we won't train the baby. The, the, the baby don't know what they're doing because you stick it in there. You're going, that, I remember I was coming up with a young man. He was sucking a ball at five. We out there playing football. He come out there sucking a ball. I used to take his ball and play football with it. <laughs> Yellow knowledge. I'm going to tell y'all who it was. <laughs> Yellow knowledge. Yellow knowledge used to come in the back door with a big old ball. What the? I said, you come out here with that thing in my took the juggle ball and play football with it. <laughs> Jigger ran back in the house, tell his mama about I took his ball. <laughs> that, that's how most saints are. Saints, saints, saints. We can't be like that. Turn and tell the neighbor, you got to grow. Now, now, you got to grow in the things of God. You got to grow in the things of God. So, so what caused you to grow? Loving the word. What caused the baby to grow? The baby need milk. You got to feed the baby milk. You can't feed him no cornbread, no collard green, because it's choking. Saint, you born again believer, stop coming to church thinking you can eat what these people been eating. And, and, and some saints be trying to feed new converts steak and, and collard green, about to choke on the death. But that's good preaching. Some things saints, new, 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 new believers don't need to be hearing. You can't holler digest it. Why are you trying to shove it down there, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. No wonder, no wonder the newborn Christian running around here gagging. It'll be fed by some of you saints don't know how to take care of baby. That's good spiritual analysis, isn't it? I hope you're getting something from this. Can this out, amen? As the natural, so go the spiritual. Okay. As a natural, so goes the spiritual. And that's, what, and that's what Jesus is telling Nicodemus. Nicodemus, that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you. Marvel not that I say unto you. You must be born again. You must be born first. You're going to be born of the water. And then you're going to be born of the spirit. Amen. The second birth is the birth that gives you eternal life. Second birth. Amen. The second birth. The, the first birth, the first birth, and then we leave in him. But that second birth gives you eternal life. Can this out? Amen. And that's done by the Holy Ghost. That's done by the Spirit of God. Spirit of God comes in us. Now this, now this, now I'm, I'm going to go into part of my message now. Right here now, I'm going into this part. See, many believers, listen at me, many believers you got to stop thinking now, since you are a born-again man or a born-again woman, you got to start understanding that if you don't depend on the Holy Spirit, that you're not going to be able to follow God. you you, you got to depend on the Holy Spirit. you got to depend on the Holy Spirit to give you counsel. you got to depend on the Holy Spirit to give you light. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives you guidance. Amen. Now, tonight, I'm going to teach you about some things about the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God. you got so many saints. We, sometimes, I thank God. See, God had to reveal this back to me because now I think because I know the Scripture. And I can preach the Scripture and I know the Word of God. You know, so I'm thinking now that I ain't got to spend as much time in prayer that I used to. Mm-hmm. Now I ain't got to do all that spiritual worshiping like I used to. Now I ain't got to release my soul to God like I used to. Now I'm calling myself grown, so I ain't got to do all that praising now. So now I can act dignified, and it, it, don't, it don't take me like all that. I see them other people around here shouting, and they're worshiping God. But I ain't got to do all that now because I done grew up. And that's why you're growing, you're growing, and, and you're growing stale. Because you got to listen, you got to listen. I find this out. If I'm going to finish God's work, if I'm going to do what God wants me to do, I got to be led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God got to give me something. And now, now watch me now. The Spirit of God, is, is, it's not, you got to seek after Him. 
I'm talking to saved people now because unsaved people do not have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Please say Holy Ghost in church. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. When you get saved, the Holy Ghost comes in you and it quickens your spirit and causes you to come alive. Now watch me. It don't do like all these people because, you know, people just go run around the church and make you feel good. No, no. It just gives you a new conscience. It gives you a new conscience. It gives you a new mind. It makes you want to do the thing that please God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, after I become a believer, now watch me now. This is important. And this is what happened with a lot of believers. And that's why you get stale in your walk. You get, you get stale. You get Because now... Well, you know, since you done got saved, you think, well, I'm going to go to heaven. That's it. Man, you got to live this on this earth. You got to fulfill destiny on the earth. Let me ask you a question. How do you think you're going to fulfill the will of God if you don't depend or be led by the Spirit of God? Amen. Okay, let me read a couple of verses of scripture right here. Okay, now. Let's let's talk about let's 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 turn to the fourth chapter of first John. Fourth chapter of first John. That's all that's backed up by Revelation. Okay. Amen. Fourth chapter of first John. Let's start reading from the, from, from the first verse. Dear friend, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world this is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. Isn't that good? Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will teach you whether or not that person is operating in the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledge, acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Now, what this actually is saying, if that person confessed that Jesus Christ in the body came in a real body and he was still God, that person has this Holy Ghost. Okay. Amen. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist, it opposes Christ. It's of the devil. Amen. So if a man, or if a woman say that they is of God and does not confess that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came in the body and he resurrected, resurrected from it with that body and that he was God in the flesh, if they don't have that truth about Jesus, they are not of God. And the Holy Ghost is not living in them. I ain't said it. Your Bible said it. To my wife, ain't nobody judge you. Hmm? That ain't, well, it is judging. But I'm judging from the standpoint of the scripture. And I said, I invite to look at that. that, that he ain't of God. Mm -hmm. He's up there talking about Jesus came from, and saying Jesus ain't, ain't rolled from the dead, then he ain't of God. He would, if he's not saying that Jesus is, is God in flesh, then he or she is not of God. Amen. They operate in the spirit of Antichrist. They haven't been born again. And notice the spirit of Antichrist. Notice that that spirit of Antichrist. And notice it's a small s. It's, it's the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of the devil. And the devil opposes everything Christ does. Amen. Now watch. Okay. Look now. Look over at. Uh, Look at the fourth verse. 
But you belong to God. You're of God. But you belong to God, little children. And have overcome the world. You've overcome them. Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Hallelujah. That's what makes me an overcomer. That's what makes us overcomers. Boy, is it, you don't know how much it would take a miracle for you to be saved. Boy, it take a miracle to be... Boy, come on, y'all. It take, take a miracle for one mind to change and to they believe in their heart the word of God. That's why Jesus said, Jesus said it like this, man. Hey, man, Jesus said that thing like this. He said, oh, God. Jesus said it like this. Jesus said, he said, except a strong man come in the house. I was praying for some people. Except a strong man. When that strong man come in the house, he, in order for him to take over the house, he got the first buy in the strong man. Now, some of y'all going to get this when you're riding around. He got the first. So when the strong man come in, he got the first bind, the strong man. If he going to take over the house. I'm, I've got to say it again. That's why somebody's going to say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of God help me. I said, now, in order for, uh, Jesus said this. He said, now, in order for uh, the strong man to take over, he got to first bind that strong man. And when he bind the strong man, then he come and take over. I don't know about you, but there's been a takeover in my life. I thought, it, I thought that'll preach good in my church. I thought that would preach good in my church. I was praying for some new converts. I said, Lord, send a takeover. Give this out, hallelujah. Send the Holy Ghost to bind every strong man that's in their life. Send the, send the, send the Holy Ghost to bind every strong, deceptive spirit in their life. Give this out, amen. The strong man got to take over. Once the strong man take over, you ain't going to have no problem with him no more. They might have to fight through some stuff, but when the strong man take over, the strong man going to be the boss of the house. Even if they fall, the strong man going to say, get up. Even if they're going through hard times, the strong man going to say, you can make it. Tell somebody there's been a takeover in my life. Uh-huh. Ain't no plan. Ain't, uh, ain't no joke. Uh, uh-uh. When my house was clean, uh-oh, uh-oh. Now, this is a priest right here. Jesus said, when a man's house is clean, said, said, say, the devil's is, they cast the devil out, lead out. The house is clean. Said, but after a while, Say, them demons going to come by. Ooh-wee. If there was no takeover, it's going to be a mess up. They're coming back, and they're going to bring back several spirit more worse than the first one. Oh, Lord. Tell that neighbor, but there been a takeover. Man. When Satan came back to make residence back in my house again, hey, man, it was a takeover in my house. And uh, can this out, Hallelujah. Jesus came in and when Satan came back, it was a big sign of said, no vacancy. I have took over and I am the ruler of this house. Can this out? Hallelujah. Oh, that'll make you shout right there. Tell a neighbor, there's been a takeover. That's why I can't quit. There's been a takeover. Come on, I ain't no more of my own. Preach, Bishop. I say, I ain't no more of my own. And you wonder why I do what I do. Tell them I tell them and say, I can't help it. I got the can't help it. It's been a takeover. The strong man has came in and bound that joker that had me bound. Can this out? Hallelujah. And you ask me while I shout. You ask me while I clap my hand. I can't help it. It's been a takeover in my life. I got to preach that, daughter. I got to preach that. I said it's been a takeover in this thing. Can this out? Hallelujah. So when some people look at me and wonder how I made it. I just throw my hand up and say, that's what we do, overcome. It's been a takeover. The strong man live in us. Kindness out, hallelujah. Tell that neighbor, strong man live in you. That's why the enemy couldn't destroy your life. That's why the enemy couldn't destroy your marriage. That's why the enemy couldn't destroy your, your spiritual life. That's why the devil couldn't kill you. Come, there's been a takeover. It's been a takeover. It's been a takeover. Kindness out, hallelujah. Oh, tell them they ain't playing church. Come on, come on. People think you just like, I ain't like everybody else. I don't care what you think about me. Call me pride, call me arrogant, call me silly, call me all what you want to. But it's been a takeover. Kidding this out, hallelujah. The stronger man came in and bound every devil, every imp, every
everything that had me down. It's been a takeover in my life. That's why I can't help it. Tell your name I can't help it. I got to tell it everywhere I go. Give the shot, hallelujah. Been a takeover, y'all. Woo! One out of the neighbor said, the greater one lives in me. The one that lives in me is greater than he that is in the world. Can you shout hallelujah? I don't care what you say about me. Can you shout hallelujah? Sometimes I look a little crazy. Sometimes I look a little weak. Sometimes I look like I'm out of it. But there has been a takeover, y'all. Give him a praise, y'all. Well, I feel like I know you can preach this. Tell your neighbor, when I accepted Jesus, he came to my house. Can this shout hallelujah? And he didn't ask nobody, can he come in? I told him, you can come in. I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that he rose. Can this shout hallelujah? Jesus said, that's all I needed. Can you shout hallelujah? He said, every devil got to come out. Every imp got to come out. Every strong man that had you bound. Get out of this house. Get out of this house. It's got to be a takeover, y'all. Can you shout hallelujah? Tell your name it's a takeover. It's a takeover. I can preach that. Can this out? Hallelujah. Tell somebody I got that can't help it. I can't help it. Christ the shot of rock I stand. Something about the name Jesus. Can this out? Hallelujah. I don't know what the world hearing. But something about the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name. Can this out? Hallelujah. It's the sweetest name I know. You can call Jeremiah. You can call Ezekiel. You can call Isaiah. You can call Moses. You can call uh, uh, Jacob. You can call Abraham. You can call Noah. You can call Job. You can call Mary and him. But when you call Jesus, make my baby jump. Can you shout hallelujah? I said, when you call Jesus, can you shout hallelujah? It gets my attention, y'all, because the strong man, the strong man lives in me. Talk about what we gonna do. Tell the neighbor, say, I got the can't help it. Heaven and earth's gonna pass away, but I'll still be standing, because Christ the solid rock. I stand, all other ground is that sinking sand. Can this out, hallelujah. And when he came in, he don't come to share his house with nobody. He ain't come to share his house. He come to take over. People ask me, tell me, you doing all right? I'm like, no, I ain't making it. I'm in there. Kidding the shot, hallelujah. I'm in there. He got me. I got to go through some things. I got to have my mind changed. But it's been a takeover. Jesus is the Lord of my life. Kidding the shot, Hallelujah. Oh, God, I got to tell it about Jesus. Can you shout hallelujah? He's the Lord of my life. He came up. He ain't leave no room for no devil. He ain't leave no room for no devils. Can you shout, no, can you shout hallelujah? Go ahead and tell the neighbor. Say, ain't no vacancy in here. No devil. Ain't in my house already filled. You just got to deal with mind thoughts. You got to deal with your natural flesh. But ain't no devils nowhere around. Cause there was a takeover, y'all. Don't you go home and tell my devils in your house. Ain't no devil in your house. The greater one lives in you. The greater one you bind every devil. Christ don't come to share his house with no demons. How devil's gonna be in my house? Mm-hmm. The Bible said God ain't give me the spirit of fear. Sometimes Satan works by fear. He ain't there, but he's trying to get you all scared. He know he ain't have no authority, so he's trying to get you to operate in fear. Because he know he's been kicked out. 
just like he was kicked out of heaven. Priest Bishop. He was kicked out of your life. Tell the neighbor I'm born again. It ain't no matter what folks say. Thank you. It's born again. I didn't say it. He said it in his word. For whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you say hallelujah? God so loved the way he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. I don't know. One day my name was whosoever. Tell your neighbor, if you got a changed name, one day you had to become whosoever. They want to know my name. My name is Mr. Whosoever. Believe it in him. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Come on, come on. Help me preach tonight. Tell him I got everlasting life. I know I'm in this world, but I got everlasting life. I'm living this life so I can live again. Can you shout hallelujah? I don't, my hope is not in this world. Turn to a neighbor and preach to him and say, I'm going to do what I do. <laughs> because I know this ain't the end of it. The devil ain't going to call me the crazy. The devil ain't going to be worrying me. <laughs> ain't going to be all stressed out. <laughs> Can this out? Hallelujah. I'm going to deal with the situation. <laughs> because my hope is not in this world. Because a strong man has came and took over the house. Can this out? Hallelujah. Jesus. They got that old saying, Elvis done left the building. I come to tell you, demons done left the building. Can they shout hallelujah? Can they shout hallelujah? See, that's what Jesus was telling them jokers. Them jokers sitting right there talking about the man was casting out devils. They were, he was casting out devils out of people. And then he, they, they looking at him to my, you cast out devils by the chief of the devil. Jesus said, you bunch of dumb ass, even Satan know that he ain't going to cast out himself because if his kingdom is divided, he know he can't stand. So why Satan going to come around casting out his own devil? Jesus said, you dumb ass, <laughs> but if a greater one, if a stronger one come by the house and say, devils, get out, that means the Son of God is right in the midst of you. Can you shout hallelujah? And that's what you don't want to acknowledge. You don't want to acknowledge that it's God in the midst of you. I told y'all I had a word, didn't I tell you? Y'all thought I was playing when I said I got a word? Can you shout hallelujah? I told you I got a word, didn't I? But I got so encouraged when I started thinking about what really happened to me. a takeover mm -hmm. and the, touch the neighbor say, and the devil can't have you come on preach to him say I don't care all the hell you go through all the things that you went through and the devil meant for your demise look at your neighbor say he can't take you out cause there has been a takeover and you don't belong to him you belong to the living God he has came and bought you with a price the blood of Jesus. Give me some hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. I'm covered by the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Give me some hallelujah. And when devils see the blood, they got to pass by. They know the Holy Ghost ain't sharing no room. Holy Ghost ain't sharing no room. Give me some hallelujah. I know that's how y'all be thinking about the devil. Ain't no devil in you. You got to get rid of mindsets. Mm -hmm, that's mindset. That's what the flesh is. Ain't no devil in you. Tell that neighbor. Ain't no devil in you. Stop talking about devil. This been a takeover. You belongs to him. You been bought with a price. He ain't have. He bought you. Oh, he bought you by. You belong to him. It's been a takeover. And that's why. That's why. That's why Jesus said, if they hated me, they gonna hate you. That stop trying to make everybody like it. Can they say hallelujah? Because if you're really born again, you're going to get on somebody's nerve. And you ain't even got to be talking to them just the way you act. You're going to get on somebody's nerve because you are not of this world. You ain't of this world. Can you say hallelujah? You ain't of this world. You are from another world. You're a new creation. Please help me preach. I try to. 
I say you're a new creation. Therefore, if any man, if any woman, be in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. Old things are passing away. Behold, all things becoming new. There's been a takeover, y'all. Get this out, hallelujah. That's why the world can't stand you. That's why the devil can't stand you. But ain't nothing you can do about it. Because upon this, I build my church in the gates of hell. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad I'm born again. Can the shout hallelujah? And the writer said, when I see Jesus. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And you got to stop worrying about thinking about what folks say. You don't even worry about what your crazy self say. Because you've been bought with the price. You ain't been bought with corruptible things like silver and gold. But you've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus. Can this out hallelujah? And he came and he took it over. So just like just like when he went to hell. When he went, see many people think when Jesus died. You think he died, he just went down the grave and just stayed down there and slept. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He wasn't just down there asleep to my way and wait the three days. He went down there conquering. He let hell know it's over. Kyle, you you got to get the gospel. I said he let hell know it was over. He let death know it was over. All the men and women that you held captive is over. Not death, they have no more authority. Can they say amen? Death have no more authority. He already told us that the third day I'm getting up. I'm going to show you that I come to bring life. I come to take over. I come to dominate. He didn't let nothing. That's what he said. He said, now all power. I ain't saying nothing. Y'all be surrounded here. I can like little wimps. Touch your neighbor and say, stop. I can like a wimp. Time to go through a little property. I got like a little wheel. You better start flexing the muscles. Tell the devil it ain't over. Can you shout hallelujah? Tell the devil it ain't over. I might look like clock kid, <laughs> but I'm going into my phone booth. Can you shout hallelujah? The greater one lives in me. Hallelujah. And sister Galeva, they're right there looking at us thinking we wimps. And don't know you're an overcomer. All the hell you go through, you still ain't down. Kidding us out, hallelujah. You still got your hands in the air. And everybody right here know that all of us done went through some hell. And you know you done went. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're on my side. Come on, tell them again, say, I'm glad you're on my side. You done went through hell and back. I saw some of the stuff you went through and God kept you. That's going to take over, y'all. Give him a praise in this place. What the enemy meant for evil, God used it for your good. Give me a shot, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah! Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo! We are such victors. Listen at this, y'all. Listen at this. We are such victors. Tell even what the devil try to uh, use to kill us with. We are such victors. What he used to try to kill us with, it worked for our good. Golly. Tell a nigga been a takeover. No devil, no flesh 
do not rule my life. They don't govern my life. Tell that neighbor my life is not governed by cir a circumstance. That's why you got to tell folk, don't judge me for a season. Tell them it wasn't nothing but a season. Can you shout hallelujah? It might look like I'm dead. It might look like the leaf is dead on the tree. Can you shout hallelujah? But it's been a massive takeover. I got resurrection power. Oh, that'll preach. Slap somebody say, I got resurrection power. I come back from the dead. People thought it was all over. Tell your name, I got resurrection power. They say, how you gonna come out of that? Resurrection power. Can you shout hallelujah? You came back from that. You came back from bad relationship. You came back from bad lifestyle. You came back from poverty. You came up out of all kind of hell. It's just a resurrection power lives in our life. Then a takeover, y'all. Woo! I'm about to quit. I'm about to quit. I just thought about something else. This came from heaven right here. You remember when God sent Joshua? Told Joshua, say Joshua, now the season done came. I know y'all been going through. Oh Jesus. I know you've been going through. He said, but now the time has came now that I'm about to give you what I promise you. I'm about to give you what I promise you. But he said, now, he said, now, Joshua, the Bible said, said, Joshua, like he talked to Moses, he said, take off your shoes. How many know God going to give you the same word? He don't, he don't be changing and all that people to my, well, God didn't deal with me like, well, well you need to go back to the altar. Because he's going to deal with all of this. He told, like he told Moses, take your shoes off. He told Joshua, take your shoes off. Other words, you can't walk in your flesh. This holy ground. The ground that I'm about to call you to thread on is not your ground. It's my ground. And you got to walk on this ground, not in your shoes, but you got to walk in this ground barefooted, doing what I told you to do. Because if you walk on holy ground without your shoes, then your feet become holy. Joshua goes out there. And watch me now. Joshua goes out there. God's want to talk to him. Joshua goes out there and he see an angel. He see a spiritual being with a sword in his hand. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, you ain't got to fight in this battle. The battle has already been won. But what it made me remind, what, what, what it made me uh, rem remember is this. That when Joshua saw that this angelic being uh, looked like he came down and, and God was talking to him and telling Joshua, I'm getting ready to, get, to give you the, the land. And so it looked like that angelic being was coming down and, 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 and Joshua drawed out his sword. And Joshua looked down to my, who you for? Are you with us? Or are you with the Canaanites? He said, who you for? Man, you know what the angelic being told him? I ain't for nobody. I come to take over. I ain't come to fight with you. I come to take over. Can they shout hallelujah? There are some situations in your salvation. It was not about you. There's been a takeover in her little bow shot. Can they shout hallelujah? He said, I came to take over. He said, Joshua, you ain't got to fight in this battle. This battle don't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. Let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. He said, was, he, he, he said the, the, the angelic being said, now, now remember that they was going to conquer Jericho, right? Y'all yeah. know the story of Jericho? Yeah. Yeah. This is the city that had the walls around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the first city that had the walls around it. Yeah. This old powerful Jericho. And the enemy couldn't get to the city of Jericho because of the wall. Yeah. Wall was a defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, they sent spies into the camp and God told them, and gave Joshua commandment. Say, don't fight. God, that's good. That's good. You wonder why they had to fight. All they had to do was march around the wall. Tell, tell your name because it already been a takeover. See, you think it's about you. But it is already a takeover. God don't need you right here fighting for him. He don't want you to do nothing but walk with your hands up. 
and do what I said, just walk around the thing one time a day and go on back down there and lay down. Get up the next day, walk around it one time. Tell our neighbor, it's going to be a takeover. Now, the angelic being already told Joshua, I didn't come to fight with you. I didn't come to fight with them. I come to take over the battle. Other word, this ain't going to be you, Joshua, your army. Uh, uh. This ain't going to be your army. Y'all ain't getting this. This ain't going to be your army. And your, no, no, no. I come to take this over. God, that's good. I'm preaching to myself. That thing has been a takeover. And y'all be wondering how you make it. Tell me how you made it. How you coming through that. How you can get through that. It's been a takeover. The greater one lives in me. Come on, talk to me. I can do. Let me go over here in a minute. I can do. Through Christ. Through who? Who going to strengthen me? It's been a takeover. Who living on the inside of me? Don't tell me what I can't handle. Don't tell me what I can't go through. Don't tell me depression got to handle me. Don't tell me I got to be oppressed. That I can do all things. People are going to look at you and tell me, how you going to get out of that? How you? I can do all things through Christ that. Through Christ that. The greater one lives in me. Can they shout hallelujah? And what I'm too weak to do, he does through me. I ain't about to talk about how strong I am. Are you hearing me? The greater one had to bring me where I am. There's no way that I could have been where I am today if he hadn't brought me where I am. Preach, Bishop. That's why I, that's why I throw my hands up because I know he's the greater one lives in me. I give him all the praise because he's my strength. When I trust him, I can do all things. I ain't got to fight. He'll fight for me. He told Joshua and them, he said, this ain't none of your battle. You ain't got to fight. I ain't come to fight with you. Put your sword up. That's preaching. Now, you know Joshua. Joshua cut a joker head off. Joshua was a warrior. What did the, what the, what, what the jelly being told him? Put your sword up. I, this a takeover. God, okay. mm. that, 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 that. See, the first thing is salvation. See, when they were going to the promised land, they got the first city, salvation, takeover. Ain't nothing you can do to be saved but trust him. It's a takeover. Salvation is by faith alone, not by works. You ain't got to fight in this. Tell me, I was mentally strong and I came. You ain't came to Jesus because you were tough. You came to Jesus because he drew you. He used somebody, to, he used somebody, but you were drawing you. And the text says it, the text says it like this. That he gave him instruction. Don't fight, put your swords up, put them up. Just walk around the city. Mm-hmm. Remember the angelic being said this. Now remember what God had promised him. God had promised him because this Rohab, the harlot, kept them safe when they came into the city to spy it out. Remember what she told them? She said, since I saved your life, what you gonna do for me? Mm -hmm. She was a bargaining woman. Yeah, yeah, she a business woman. Yeah, that Rahab was stupid as you want her. Rahab, Rahab was running the house of ill repute. She had a little business sense. She said, mm -hmm. said our life or your life? So we say your life, and what you gonna do back for us? She said, and, 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 and they said, and, and they said, what you want us to do? She said, okay, when y'all come and take the city, I want you to save my me and my house, my family. Talk. Huh? Mm -hmm. and then, then she said, I know God gonna get y'all the city. Here you got a prostitute. Ran the house of real repute. She knew that God was going to get him the city. Do you not know God move when a man or woman trust him? He don't care nothing about your condition. God move when a person trusts him. God move by faith. Faith move God. Not my tears, my faith. Not my emotion, my faith. It moved God. She stood up there flat footed. She wasn't crying. She was making a bargain. And they promised her, 
He said, when we come and we take over the city, we promise that your house won't be destroyed. And her house, watch this now. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Her house was on top of the wall. You read it in your Bible. Her house was on the walls. On the walls of Jericho. Now, in order for you to get in Jericho, the walls had to come down. Man. How the walls come down? Touch the neighbor said it was a takeover. That's why. Joshua and them had nothing to do with the walls coming down. How do you think the walls came down? It was a takeover. That, that, you, remember, you remember that angelic host told Joshua, I didn't come for you to fight with you. I came to take this over. Y'all ain't got to fight in this. I come to take this over. You, you know no flesh can't tear down them walls. It had to be a spiritual warfare. Go well, that's good. For the weapon of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Do the pulling down of strongholds. Stop that neighbor telling them it's a takeover. It better do the pulling down of strongholds. I don't fight like the world fight. I don't, I don't fuss and argue and do that. I, I do it the way God told me to do it. Can they say hallelujah? How many know he's my refuge? How many know he's my strong tower? How many know he's, he's my refuge place? He do, he's my safety zone. When I want to run somewhere, I run to him. Can they say hallelujah? He's my hiding place. Can they say hallelujah? Can they say hallelujah? My God, he's my refuge. And then the text says, when they, they, the last day, they walked around the city six times. And then, then the Bible said, Joshua said, not shout. Don't tear down no walls, because it wasn't their fight. He ain't come to, who tore the walls down? Who tore the walls down? The angelic host, the beings tore it down. And, and, and it's amazing that when the walls got torn down, Rahab's house was not destroyed. I wonder who kept her house. I wonder how her house was on top of the wall and didn't fall down and was destroyed. Tell your neighbor to take over. And if God be for you. Come on, tell him that he's a miracle working God. When all the substance wear out, when I have nowhere else to go, when I can't trust in nobody else, I'm serving a God that's a miracle working God. He know how to take it over. People right here worrying about what ain't, what ain't everything belongs to him. Sometimes it's just good for you to go home and go to sleep. I don't know what I'm gonna do. God, okay, well, this, you know, it's over. I done tried all I can do. I'm exhausted now. You know I serve you. All right, it's over. Okay, God, you what you gonna do? I ain't gonna worry about it no more. Whatever you do, are you gonna do? Can this out hallelujah? Sometimes God wants you to surrender and let me have it. Oh, it's been a takeover. People tell me, how long y'all going to be here until Jesus come? Tell your neighbor till Jesus come. If he, 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 he going to be here until Jesus come. Tell, if he don't move us out of here, we're going to be here until Jesus come. The greater one lives in us. Can they say hallelujah? Christ is the one that's setting up his kingdom. Been a takeover. And many people wonder why you ain't failed yet. Because when you want to fall, he holds you up. Because you ain't your own no more. <laughs> Praise Bishop. I said, because you ain't your own no more. Hey, you be to my hair, I go, I'm falling. God said, well, shut up. <laughs> Doing a takeover. And you to my, I'm holding on. You ain't holding on nothing. Because if you were depend on you to hold on, all of us have been slipped. Tell your neighbor, it's a takeover. Man, man, when you, when you look like when you look like you're losing the battle, you're still winning. Can this out of man? You're winning the battle. And you wonder how God does things. I told y'all he's a miracle working God. I'm tired of reading this Bible and trying to act all, all, all deep. Man, God did things by miracles. 
That's what he wants to do. He's a supernatural God. If God gave me a job, hallelujah, I'm going to glorify God with a job. But I know God want to do more than that. Touch your neighbor and tell him that's a small thing. For God to give you a job that's small. Is there anything too hard for God? Anything too hard for God? Anything. Not the God we serve tearing down walls and holding up people's houses. And all the saints were doing was walking around the wall with their hands in their pocket. See, so every time we walk around the church, that's the story right there. It's been a takeover. So every time you walk around the church, you let, let the devil know. You might well get your hand off that. It's, it's about to, it, can, can you shout hallelujah? It, it is about to be an invasion. God is about to take over. Can you shout hallelujah? You'd have been holding my children captive too long. My daughter been captive too long. My son been captive too long. My stuff been captive too long. Can you shout Hallelujah. It's about to be a takeover and everything God done promised me is about to be released. And I don't fight like the world fight. I don't think like the world think. I don't act like the world act. When I want to fight, I do warfare with praise. I do warfare in my spiritual warfare. I do praise and worship. Hallelujah. And you don't let nobody tell you how you're going to fight. You tell a joke, excuse me if I'm hollering a little loud, you better change your seat. Because I'm about to go wall. I'm about to go. I'm about to go to battle. You might ain't, you might don't have nothing for God to do, but right now I'm in a desperate need. So I'm going to get a little loud. So if you want to change your seat, feel free to do so right now. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said where you at? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. My God for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty. Through God. Through the pulling down. Of stronghold. Takeover. God ain't coming in this fight to join with you. Sometimes he talk to me here. Tell me he's joining with you to fight. You be home sleep somewhere. All dead and knocked out. Tell me you want to quit. He ain't coming. He come to take over. He fighting when you sleep. He fighting when you done messed up. He still fighting on your part. Talk to me here. He fighting when you acting crazy. Because the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. Preach to your neighbor. Say, all God wants you to do is keep your hands up. Hey, how you coming out? Keep your hands up. Every time the devil says you ain't going to make it, though. The devil is a liar. I give you praise, Lord God. You are the God of my life. I glorify your name. Can you shout hallelujah? Come on, give him a praise. Yeah, take a praise break right now. Come on, because you are overcomer. You remember how God brought you out. I got to quit. I got to quit. I got to quit. But I'm sitting around here, I'm looking at testimonies. I'm looking at people's testimonies. Some of, some of us came to the ministry talking about you had a sickness that you all th always thought you were going to have. That devil is a liar. Man, when I learned, when I learned that, man, man, when I learned that God had gave me victory over everything, I ain't want to hear what nobody say. I ain't want to hear nothing. I ain't want to know what high blood pressure. I ain't even talking like that. That devil is a liar. Whatever it is, he said who was wrong with me, it's going to get right. Hallelujah. 
My God, I want somebody to say hallelujah bad. Talking about I'm always going to be like this. The devil is a liar. I don't find the, I don't find the blessed hope. Salvation whole. Body, soul, and spirit. Everything going to be given back. My health going to be given back. My wealth going to be given back. My sanity is going to be given back. Give me some hallelujah. I ain't got to accept nothing the devil trying to put on my life. It has been a takeover. in this crazy flesh hallelujah God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the wise uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. and then the text said when you then the text said when you say I am weak then you become strong cause your dependency is not in you no more you already know if it had not been for God on my side, the enemy would have swallowed me up a long time ago. But if God be for me, then a take over. If I belongs to him, he gonna hold me up. Can this out hallelujah? Oh, if I belongs to him, he gonna see me through it. If there's a word over your life, God gonna watch over his word. Touch your neighbor and say, God peeking at you right now. Mm -hmm. When you sleep, he peeking. When you out of it, he watching over you. Because there's a preach bishop, because there's a word over your life. Can this out? Hallelujah. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I got some testimonies. I remember just been two months ago. I was riding down the road in my car. I shared this with some people. I don't know how I got home and I was tired. I just got off the plane from somewhere. I've been preaching it and I was tired. And I told it to me. I was on my way home. I said, I'm tired, man. I don't know. And, and I was driving home from West Palm Beach. I was driving through Raw Palm. Let me tell y'all something. I was driving through Raw Palm and my God, I fell asleep. And my God, I don't know how I turn off in this village called, I think his name is Sabal or Sadal or something. I ain't never been in that place in all my life. When I woke up, I was in the place, in the middle of the road. People were blowing their horn at me. I'm driving down Okeechobee. How in the world did I turn off in their sleep? Oh, shoot. When I got back there, I didn't know how I got back there. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know. I didn't. Know. And, and 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 I saw two Caucasian, Caucasian lady. They got out the car, looking at me, talking. I said, "What they talking? What? Why y'all tripping? You know what I'm saying?" And they've been parked behind me. I've been holding up traffic. They had to go all the way around and turn back up because I done blocked off the whole intersection. That sleep. For the angel of the Lord that kept about those. You talking about that game? I got scared when I woke up. I, 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 I had to park on the side of the road. I said, what the devil? I parked on the side of the road. I took a praise break. And you wonder why devils can't kill you. And people that want to see you go under, you ain't going under. Because you had enough sense to say, Lord, save me. Can you shout hallelujah? Ain't nobody crazy in here. If we see ourselves going under, we got to be dead and life is in the power of the tongue. Tell that name I got power everywhere. All I got to do is open my mouth. I got power. Oh, God. done with this Lord I'm done I thank hallelujah I got to get back to that it's been a takeover 
Let me say, let me say this to you, and then I'm done. Rest on your feet. I'm done. Hallelujah. People think, people think you out here, they think, they think you're trying to be saved. <laughs> Go in and slap a neighbor to me. I ain't trying to be saved. <laughs> Go in and tell them, say, salvation saving me. <laughs> I ain't trying to be saved. Salvation saving me. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Why are you living on the earth? Why are you here? Let me tell you something. If you're going to be mildly used by God, let me say to make this statement. It's, it has been a takeover. The Spirit of, Spirit of God lives in you. The Spirit of God lives where? In you. Where does the Spirit of God live? In you. Now, this is, this is, this is, I said this to you. You don't heard me say this before. I got to say it again because faith comes by hearing by the Word of God. Okay, now, the Spirit of God lives in you, perhaps. He lives in you, Sister Bell. Now, when you learn, I'm your pastor, I'm your preacher. That's it. And God placed me here to put a word in you. But watch me now. Watch me now. Watch me. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to do my job as best as I can. But if you're ever going to become mature, you better learn how to let the Holy Ghost talk to you. No, 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 no. Make another statement. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to show you something. This is, going to be, this, is going to, this is going to be powerful right here now. Jesus, when he was on the earth, he lived on the earth as a man, didn't he? He couldn't perform as God. It's illegal. It would have been illegal. And Satan knew it. He had to perform as a man. Because he couldn't act divine on the earth because he had a job to do. Only a man could have died for man. Even though he was God, he counted out robbery to be equal with God. He made of himself no reputation, but he took on the servant of a man and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He was a man, but watch this now. So how did he operate on the earth? As a man. Now, okay, now, he had to depend on the Holy Ghost to lead him. He had to depend on the Spirit of God to lead him. Why do you think he spent all that time in prayer? Don't, don't y'all, don't play this. You can't play this. You can't fake it. You got to spend time with God. You got to pray. You got to spend time with God. Let me tell you, sir. A person don't pray, they ain't walking by faith. You got to pray. I don't care what you're going through in your life. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care you. I don't care if you at hell door. Bow down in front of hell door and pray. Pray. Nothing take the place of prayer. I don't know, know what I don't know how I can preach this to you. Nothing takes the place of prayer. I don't take the place of prayer. What you heard the night came from God. Now, listen at me. But now the word of God giving you knowledge about who you are and who God is. What did happen to us as believers? Now, now, your next step is you spend time with God. Let me let me make let me make it clear. Let me show you what he did. This is what Jesus did. That's why you always find it in the scripture. You always find it in the scripture before Jesus did anything. Watch me. You remember when Jesus, Mary and Martha called Jesus to come pray for Lazarus? Y'all remember that? He said, now they said they told him to come, Lazarus, the one whom you love. He's sick. Jesus had already got an answer from the Holy Ghost. Stop thinking he operated as God. He had spent time in prayer and the Holy Spirit told him what to do. Therefore, he held up two days. He wouldn't go because he knew God wanted to get greater glory. They already knew him as a healer, but God wanted to get greater glory out of Lazarus' life. So what the Holy Ghost told him to do? 
stay in Judea for two more days and wait till he die. That was the Holy Ghost told him to do it. Stop thinking because Jesus, because Jesus lived in his uh, in the in the body, he was God in flesh. Stop thinking that he lived any different from how we live it. He totally depended on God, the Spirit of God. That's why he talked to God like he talked to him, because he had to be spirit led. Stop thinking you can get something done if you ain't talking to God. You got to pray. Nothing take the place of that. Nothing. Let me tell you something. I ain't talking about pray when you come to church. What get God's attention more than anything is when we, when we divide from one another, go to a different home, and then you go and spend time alone talking to God. Nothing get God's attention like that. And I'm not, this ain't listening at me. I didn't even know what I was doing, so I ain't trying to act deep. I ain't trying to be deep when I tell you this. I ain't trying to be all spiritual and deep because I didn't even know what I was doing. I, 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 when, 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 when God, when, when I was first doing ministry, that's how I learned how to pray. I learned how to pray during no season in my life. And my family, my wife was there. They know I pray every night. I could hardly wait to get in that room and start talking to God. And let me tell you something. I believe that's the reason why God used my life like he did. I'm telling you that. I believe that's the reason why he, he, he used my life like he did. Because I spent time with him, and I prayed, and he talked to me. I didn't want to come out of that time uh, trying to act all deep. No, I, I prayed because I knew that I needed leadership from God. So how do God lead you? He leads you by the Holy Spirit. Whatever one listen to me. Whenever I want to get a word from God, I don't run to the church to my pastor. Give me a word, Bishop. That's, that's what we hear. I know God can give, give your pastor a word to give you and for confirmation. But watch this. This maturity. When God, when, when, whenever God wants to give me a word, and I got my overseer. I think he's one of the wisest men according to the scripture that live on this earth. But I don't wait to get around him to get a word from God. I get on my knees and pray. I talk to God. When I want to, listen, when I want to know what to preach to you, you know what I do? I don't you know, I don't go in there and study for no three hours. I get on my knees and pray. And I know, watch me now, and I know when I pray, watch me, I know when I pray, I know the Holy Spirit lives in me. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is going to give me something. He's going to energize my mind. The Spirit of God is going to tell me what the church, what you need. That's why you see me breaking my neck. I want to spend time. I want to need to pray. Nothing take the place of that. Nothing take the place of prayer. And don't you let your flesh, don't you let your flesh dictate how you pray. You, get, you tell your flesh, you might well, you might well wake up because I'm going to get out of here and pray. You might, your knees, you might well just get, you no, know, I sit up on the side of the bed, but I'm going to pray. But I'm going to spend time in prayer. When you pray, Bounce, when you pray, what happens is the Spirit of God, Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, now he is alert. You're talking to God. That's how, how do God talk to you? How do he talk to you? He talks to you in spirit. Not your brains, not your mind. He talks to you in spirit, spirit, in your spirit. Stop depending on your brains. Because you could be in prayer and your brain says crazy. Talk to me. I said you could be in prayer and your brain's just going to slap crazy. Sometimes I stop praying and say, you must be going out your mind. Where in the devil that come from? Now, 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 when I say that, the, 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 what you think? I don't get up and stop praying. I get back down there and pray because I understand now my flesh don't want to pray and the devil sure don't want me to pray. Because he know now time I start praying, watch me now, when we start praying now, he know that God now is going to start interacting with you. See, 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 he's going to start interacting with you. 
a lot, a lot of time, a lot of saints don't have a lot of interacting because we miss time in prayer. Yeah. Sometimes when you pray, when you when you when you when you pray, then God interact with you. He go, he'll put stuff in your spirit. And then when you come here, then your man of God will say something and call the and call that baby to jump. But you already got it in your spirit. Don't think you be getting things in your spirit without prayer. Because if you're not praying, the enemy will play something in your mind. And you think it's the Holy Ghost. Prayer get rid of that stuff. Prayer get rid of it. Prayer give you a pure heart. Prayer give you a pure mind. When you get down there and you start praying, prayer cause you to clean up. People that you don't like, you start praying for them. See, you can't get nothing pure from God when you got hell in you. Prayer makes you start praying, praying for people that you don't like. Because God is getting ready to talk to you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's God's spirit. Since it's been a takeover, then let him take over. He took over your life. Can I tell you now? He took over your life. Now he want to take over your situation. But you got to listen to him. And the way that you listen to him is in prayer. Join in with your neighbors. In Jesus' name.